This video is all about upgrading the SSD inside the 2025 Low Z13, going from the original 1TB to a faster and bigger 2TB Crucial P310. I'll show you the whole process from cloning the drive offline, prepping it with a thermal pad, installing it, and running speed tests. Let's get into it. Let's start from the very beginning. Before I even cracked this thing open, I ran some speed tests on the original SSD using Crystal Dismark. First, while unplugged, here are the results. Then again, while plugged in with the proprietary charger. And here are the results. Yeah, the speed difference is huge. Unplugged, it performs at roughly half the speed. That seems pretty typical. Laptops throttle PCIe performance to save battery. And whether you're using USB-C charging or the included power adapter, the speed stays the same because both perform high enough wattage. Interesting, right? Here's the SSD I am installing in this video, the Crucial P310. This little Lego piece uses the M.2 2230 form factor, tiny but mighty. It's PCIe Gen 4 and boasts speed up to 7100 megabyte per second read and 6000 megabyte per second write. We're going to see how much of a big step up from the stock drive. Flipping open the kickstand, you'll find the SSD enclosure under this tiny lid. That's where we're heading in in a bit. Let's unbox this first. The SSD is tucked inside a plastic case. Look how small this thing is, like a stick of gum or a Lego towel. I'm pairing this with a thermal pad. This one is for a regular 2280 NVMe SSD, so I'm gonna cut it down to fit the 2230 size. It doesn't have to be perfect, just enough to match the label area. Simple design, but kind of reminds me of a tiny block chocolate bar it's got those clean lines and glossy label now here's the clone station i'm using it's a dual bay and bme docking station offline cloning no computer needed there's a fan built in front vent button to start cloning source slot target slot sturdy metal built and super compact a usb 3.2 connection if you want to use it as a regular dock power in and on off button i am powering it with an apple 70 watt charger since the dock needs more than 20 watt to function properly to open the ssd compartment or lid I've got two tools, a Torx T5 screwdriver for the outer screw and a PH0 Phillips head for the SSD itself. The Torx T5 screwdriver for the star-shaped screw. Links to everything I'm using, including the SSD, tools, and pad are in the description. I do earn a small commission if you use those, so thank you. Using the T5 to get the lid off. The lid comes off easily if you tilt the tablet down a bit. Here's something to talk about. The lid is plastic on the outside but has a metal plate inside. That helps with heat dissipation, so the thermal pad will sit right on this.
All right, switching to the Phillips screwdriver, unscrewing the SSD. And sliding it out horizontally first, then lifting up. There you go. Here's the original a Keoxia one terabyte. Thanks for your service, buddy. You have been cloned and replaced. May your bits rest in peace. Now on to cloning. Original SSD goes into the source slot. And the P310 into the target slot. Power on the dock from the back, and then you see the lights on the front. White for on, red for unused USB-C port, green for the two slots being used. Now hold the start button for 5 seconds until the lights start dancing like, think, Knight Rider kit car. If the flashing lights stop, you probably let go too soon. Like here, me. Just press and hold again when the lights run back and forth continuously. Cloning is in progress. This time I'll press and hold a bit longer. And there you go. So I recorded the fan running. I like you to hear it. Each blue solid LED is 25% complete, so you get a nice little progress bar. Four blue solid LEDs mean 100% complete. And the bottom gets warm. That's expected since these SSDs move a lot of data. And the fan is still running until you turn it off. Once cloning is done, I remove the new SSD. Line up the thermal pad and trim it to match the size. I air blow everything, OCD. Peel off the cover plastic on one side, the side that I'm going to put on top of the SSD label. Now back to the Z13. Again, you can tilt the tablet to drop out the lid. OCD air blowing the SSD slot real quick and install the P310. Again, the thermal pad should touch the inner lid, the metal. Once the second plastic film is off the pad, I drop the SSD in and screw it down. If you don't use the thermal pad, everything should be just fine. However, I do recommend it though.
close the lid screw it back in and getting ready to fire it up now firing it up It should take a little longer to boot the first time after an SSD swap. Totally normal. Later reboots will be much quicker. Real time and unedited here. So you get to see how long it would take. Okay, there you go. Inputting my password. Everything looks as is. All right, crystal disk mark time. Let's go, let's go. With the new P310 installed and plugged in, we're getting about 7,000 megabyte per second read and between 6,300 and 6,400 megabyte per second write speeds. And here are the old drive results for comparison. So the new P310 is definitely a nice performance bump. Now you've got this leftover unallocated space. Mine is 909.15 gigabytes. On the C drive, you can't extend the volume because you have these partitions in between, which you may not want to mess with. If you're like most people, you just right click here and create a new simple volume. And that's totally fine. There, the Anywhere JSON drive is created. But if you want to merge everything together into one C drive, you'll need a third-party software like Mini Tool Partition Wizard. You'd have to delete some partitions, move others, and then extend the C drive. Not hard, but more advanced. But I didn't go with it in this video. That's it. Upgraded SSD cloned drive and better performance. Hope this helped you out or at least give you a good look at what to expect. Anyway, thank you for watching. Do come back for the next one.